And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Zero media. Last night, the last straw. I mean, the whole world saw the circus last night. Who was that guy with shoe polish on his head who thought he was so smart? I don't know who he was. So I started out by tweeting during uh, the show on Facebook. You know, I kind of snoo for me. So my first one was, Huckabee looks like a twin for Bob Hope. I couldn't place him. I kept trying to f figure out who Huckabee looked like. I said, darn, looks like Bob Hope. Uh, Fiorina, I, said, <coughs> I wrote, looks like a frigid beekeeper. Christie looks likable. Senator Paul looks dazed. Trump dumped the slimy CNB weasel. Ten minutes later, I said, go cruise, attack the glue head. Then Jim Cramer came on. I don't know what he was on. I don't know if Jim Cramer got a, the last supply of Mickey Rooney's drugs, but uh, what was Jim Cramer on? What was he screaming about? Does Jim Cramer, the lunatic, want Cuban-style medicine? Government control of drug de developments? I said, hey, Jim, how many new drugs were created in Cuba, in Cuba, Jim? These people are illiterates in the sense they don't know what they're talking about. He wants to attack the drug companies who are charging too much for drugs. See, I know a little bit about it because I worked for a master's degree in pharmacology at one point in my career. Do you know what it costs to develop a drug? Do you have any idea what it costs? you think it's free? That is why the ex-Soviet Union produced no new medicines. That is why socialist countries generally produce no new medicines. Only capitalist countries, which are willing to invest, what is it now, $1.2 billion to bring any new drug to market? develop any new drugs. It's called a profit motive, Schmendrick. Does CNBC belong behind bars, Jim, for lying to the American people was my next tweet. Then I wrote, John Hardwood needs to be taken to the smokehouse. Then Kasich was spastic with the hands flying. I, I uh, tweeted, is Kasich doing aerobics or debating? I thought he was exercising. Next, I said, CNBC gluehead attacks Carson below belt, gets booed. Five minutes later, Rubio gets a Babe Ruth, does a Babe Ruth, calls MSM the Lib Super PAC, and calls Hillary a liar. That was a great shot. I got. In, I have no respect for Rubio. I called him the ice cream man. I would say the ice cream man cometh. Finally, I wrote, uh, endless attacks on repubs while Dems get to walk after a few hapless comments. Boycott all the debates. If I were the Republicans, I'd boycott all the debates from now on. I'd hold my own. I'd have Trump stage a debate. No more debates before these idiots. My last tweet was, when does this crucifixion end? How long must these decent people hang on the cross of liberal hatred? Now, I want to talk a little bit about that, but not that much. You know, you've heard it all morning, probably. It's boring. It's old. I want to get some fun today, which is book clerk horror stories. You know, the nipple, I mean, the uh, nose ring types, the green hair, the green nose hair women. Those with tattoos on their souls. Book clerk store horror stories would be fun for the listeners. And then I'm going to talk about zero media. And I got to say this, you know, I, I just came from an interview with Larry King. He's still doing television for RT. And I, um, I enjoyed it very much. Larry's a liberal, a lifetime liberal. But you see, there's a difference between a liberal like Larry King and psychotic progressives like well, CNBC, uh, certainly MSNBC, as you well know, these are psychotic, dyed-in-the-wool lunatics. Liberal I could live with. He asked me reasonable questions, Larry King did. He didn't, he didn't attack me. He asked me a question, was showing his, you know, his view, viewpoint. He said, he said, in Government Zero, you attack the Pope for his positions. He said, what are you, against Jesus? No, he did it with humor. I said, no, no, I have nothing against Jesus. I said, I'm against the political pope. He said, what do you really don't like about the pope, Larry King? I said, he knows nothing. He knows as much about the climate as that when it, when it rains, his, his assistants hold up the umbrella. So he said, well, what do you know about the climate? So I said, well, I have a PhD from a great university. I've written scientific papers and I can read the literature. And I would like to see some of the evidence from the 2% of scientists who don't agree that global warming is caused by man. So Larry King says, you don't believe in global warming? But listen to what he said, believe in. You see, it's a religion now. So I said, Larry, can you have any evidence of global warming down in L.A.? 
He said, well, the Earth's temperature has been rising one degree, and he gives me a fact that's completely wrong. I said, that's wrong. It's completely false. We're actually entering a new cooling phase, Larry. But they don't know. Many of them don't know the realities. They're not me be bad people. On CNBC, they're bad people. Gluehead was a, ba a bad person. Between the, uh, the, the shoe polish and the glue on his head, it seeped through the cranium. Questions that should have been asked in the economic debate include the following. How would you continue this alleged economic recovery that Obama has started? Answer. There is no recovery. And this economy is built like a house of cards. Page 248. <laughs> from zero business sense. Here's another question that should have been asked last night. Uh, unemployment is down to its lowest level since early in the Bush administration. How would you keep it that way? Answer. That's a lie. More people are out of work today than there have been in decades. They fix the numbers to meet their needs. Pages 251, 252, government zero. Next question would have been nice. The Fed has kept interest rates at zero percent. Is this a policy you would continue to support? Answer. This is part of the big lie of the health of the economy. The dollar has become worth much less as a result of this policy and Obama printing money. Page 256. Next question would have been nice. Are you a supporter of the TTP and free trade? How come Hard, Hardhead didn't ask that? Why didn't, it, why didn't John Hardhead ask that? Are you a supporter of the TTP and free trade? Answer. <clears throat> free trade, the way it's designed, only benefits Wall Street, not the people. These deals Obama is crafting will do nothing but destroy American business and the economy. Page 258. Next question. Won't comprehensive immigration reform help the American economy? Answer. Letting anyone and everyone into the country will kill it faster than anything. Not only with low-skilled workers, but also the higher-skilled ones who are only let in here because they work cheaper than American workers. Page 265. One last question I would have asked. Is the current banking system working? Can a bank be too big to fail? Answer. The banks have too much power and influence over the economy. We need to repeal Glass-Steagall. Page 318 of Government Zero. I've given you my tweets. I've shown you questions. I'll talk about Zero Media. Because last night was the last straw for many of you. And you saw it in the first two minutes. Look, this was supposed to be a debate about economics. The first question is, what, what is your biggest weakness? Why didn't they ask that of Hillary Clinton? Why didn't they ask Hillary Clinton, what is your biggest weakness? To make matters worse, the candidates took it seriously and answered it. I wouldn't have answered it. I would have said our biggest weakness is appearing before idiots like you. But the rest of the night unfolded the way it did. John Hardhead, a noted liberal hack, posing as an objective journalist, started things off calling Donald Trump a cartoon character. And it went downhill from there. It wasn't until Ted Cruz made clear that this was a clown show and not a debate that the rest of the candidates jumped on the bandwagon and began to fight back. Do we have Ted Cruz in clip four? Is that the one? Let's listen to clip four of Ted Cruz. We salute him today. Did a great job. Let's hear it. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. See? This is not a cage match. And you look at the questions, Donald Trump, are you a comic book villain? Ben Carson, can you do math? John Kasich, will you insult two people over here? Marco Rubio, why don't you resign? Jeb Bush, why have your numbers fallen? How about talking about the substantive issues people care about? Now, that's a, that's a candidate, and he was 100% right. And why the Republicans agree to, to appear before these liberal idiots, I, I don't know. They can just boycott them. You know, on page 65 of Government Zero, I ask where the media is when it comes to talking about the threats we face from ISIS and radical Islam, how they've lost the ability to see that their jobs are to, to, uh, to be the skeptics and the truth finders about people in power. It's one of the most important checks on power that we've ever had, and they don't use it. They don't use it because they're proud to be a tool of those people in power. They use it to attack conservatives, not to attack an out-of-control liberal government. But they also believe that you, the people, are too idiotic to run your own life. On page 285, I tell you we have zero freedom of the press. They have allowed themselves to be left out of following some of the most important stories of our time. They blindly follow Obama's marching orders. They sit when told to sit, and they jump when they're told to jump, and they do it because they love him. Obama is the media's God. If they ever do ask him a tough question, they apologize for it. 
They will sit on stories if they're asked to, uh, ordered by uh, this administration. Let me tell you something, folks. Having zero media is actually more dangerous than having Obama. Because although we can see what is going on, there are millions who would rather watch home shows on HGTV or pregnant teenagers on MTV. And that's why my book, Government Zero, is so important. You have to be the one who picks up the torch and does the media's job. I've laid it out for you word by word. Not only does it tell you what's going on, but what you can do about it. You have to be the champion. Zero media cannot be allowed to shut us down. You have to spread the word and hold your family and friends accountable. The country depends upon it. WMAL, Frank, go ahead, please. You're the first up this hour in the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thank you for taking my call, Dr. Savage. It's a pleasure. What I wanted to talk about was the CNBC debate the other night and how terrible the uh, the moderators were and uh, how well the, the candidates responded. Uh, what I wanted to take away from that is is enough with the uh, the, the leftist, rightist, whatever moderators. We need somebody like you uh, that is grounded in conservative principles and uh, and just you know what. Well, but I do it every day on the radio show. I have no power. I have no authority. The Republicans won't even come on the show. The only candidate who comes on the show is Donald Trump. Ask yourself why these Republicans, who are very good, I pick any one of them over Hillary Clinton. Why won't they come on this show? Ask yourself that question. Do you have an answer? I, I do. I do. I think that uh, I think that the, their handlers won't let them come on. I would imagine that uh, that some. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. So if their handlers won't let them come on the Savage Nation, but they go on a dunce's show like Porn Vanity. Why won't they come on this show? What are they so afraid of? And what does it tell you about their inability to handle their handlers? If they can't handle handlers during a campaign, how are they going to handle a nation? I, I agree with you 100%. No, look, i got to run along. I don't mean to be rude. We're running short of time, and I appreciate all the compliments. You're getting a free copy of uh, the book just out this week, Government Zero, which, by the way, is doing terrific. It's flying off the shelves when it can be found, uh, despite... We're getting, we're getting reports here and there, not everywhere, of book clerks hiding them, defaced copies being seen in stores. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? How many Republicans can dance on the heads of uh, glue heads on MSNBC or CNBC? It doesn't really matter. It was a... Uh, Meanwhile, the Russians are buzzing our carriers. ISIS has continued to murder, rape, kill, kidnap, uh, sell into slavery. And we're worried about uh, jack-o'-lanterns causing global warming. That's right. Your idiotic morons in the federal government say that jack-o'-lanterns are causing global warming. They want to take away pumpkins from your children. I'm not making this up. This is an example of the lunatics who say don't use the word hard work. And certain lives matter and other lives don't matter. Pumpkins, according to the Department of Energy's website, contribute to global warming by decomposing into methane. And here's what the idiots in your government write. With the passing of Halloween, millions of pounds of pumpkins have turned from seasonal decorations to trash destined, destined for landfills. Adding to more than 254 million tons of municipal solid waste produced in the United States every year says Obama's moronic idiot psychos at the Department of Energy. They go on. This Halloween, think of turning the seasonal waste into energy as a very important trick that can have a positive environmental and energy impact. So, folks, those pesky pumpkins are a greater threat than ISIS headcutters. This is your government at work. That's right. Those pesky pumpkins are a greater threat to your survival than any one of those Islamo-fascists that you may not have heard of. They go on, it's even more. It might be long until the 1.3 billion pounds of pumpkins we produce annually are nearly as important to our energy security as they are to Halloween. I suppose they should get the FBI to go to every jack-o'-lantern that's lit this Halloween and look inside and make sure that there's an appropriate candle. A candle that doesn't burn too much energy in order to produce too much waste because this pumpkin power is really a threat to our survival 
That's right. It's pump 